Question. The nurse is providing care for a patient diagnosed with laryngeal cancer who is receiving radiation therapy. The patient tells the nurse that he is experiencing hoarseness and difficulty with speaking. What is the nurse's best response? 1. Let's elevate the head of your bed and see if that helps. 2. Your voice should improve in 6 to 8 weeks after completion of the radiation. 3. Sometimes patients also experience dry mouth and difficulty with swallowing. 4. I will call your health care provider and let him know about this. Answer. Option 2 is correct. Hoarseness often gets worse during treatment with radiation therapy. The nurse should reassure the patient that this usually improves within 6 to 8 weeks after therapy is completed. Strategies that may help during radiation therapy include voice rest with use of alternative means of communication, as well as saline gargles or sucking on ice chips. Elevating the head of the bed may help with oxygenation, but will not help with hoarseness. Responses 3 and 4 are important but do not speak directly to the patient's concern. Focus, prioritization. Question. The nurse is supervising a nursing student providing care for a patient with shortness of breath who has expressed interest in smoking cessation. Which questions would the nurse suggest the student asks to determine nicotine dependence? Select all that apply. 1. How soon after you wake up in the morning do you? 2. Do other members of your family smoke? 3. Do you smoke when you are ill? 4. Do you wake up in the middle of your sleep time to smoke? 5. Do you smoke indoors or outside? 6. Do you have a difficult time not smoking in places where it is not allowed? Answer. Option 1, 3, 4 and 6 are correct. When a patient expresses interest in smoking cessation, this is an important teaching moment for the nurse. However, it is essential to determine the patient's level of nicotine dependence by asking questions such as questions 1, 3, 4, and 6, which will give clues to this important information. While it is important to know about other family smokers and whether the patient smokes inside or outside, this information does not necessarily help with determining nicotine dependence. Focus, Supervision, Prioritization Question the RN clinical instructor is discussing a patient's oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve with a student. The student states that the patient's oral body temperature is elevated at 100.8 degrees Fahrenheit, 38.2 degrees Celsius. Which statement by the student indicates correct understanding of this patient's curve shift? 1. When a patient's body temperature is elevated, there is no change in the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. 2. When a patient's body temperature is elevated, there is a shift to the left because the oxygen tension level is lower. 3. When a patient's body temperature is elevated, there is no shift in the curve because the patient is using less oxygen. 4. When the patient's body temperature is elevated, there is a shift to the right so that hemoglobin will dissociate oxygen faster. Answer. Option 4 is correct. When the need for oxygen is greater in the tissues, there is a curve shift to the right. This means that oxygen is dissociated from hemoglobin faster. Conditions that shift the curve to the right include increased body temperature, increased carbon dioxide concentration, and decreased pH or acidosis. This means that hemoglobin unloads oxygen to the tissues because they need it to support the higher metabolism, and this is a tissue protection that increases oxygen delivery to the tissues that need it the most. Focus. Prioritization. Question. An experienced LPN LVN under the supervision of the team leader RN is assigned to provide nursing care for a patient with a respiratory problem. Which actions are appropriate to the scope of practice of an experienced LPN LVN? Select all that apply. 1. Auscultating breath sounds. 2. Administering medications via metered dose inhaler. 3. Completing in depth admission assessment. 4. Checking oxygen saturation using pulse oximetry. 5. Developing the nursing care plan. 6. Evaluating the patient's technique for using MDIS. Option 1, 2, and 4 are correct. The experienced LPN LVN is capable of gathering data and making observations, 
including noting breath sounds and performing pulse oximetry. Administering medications, such as those delivered via MDIS, is within the scope of practice of the LPN-LVN. Independently completing the admission assessment, developing the nursing care plan, and evaluating a patient's abilities require additional education and skills within the scope of practice of the professional RN. Focus, Assignment, Supervision Question The nurse is evaluating and assessing a patient with a diagnosis of chronic emphysema. The patient is receiving oxygen at a flow rate of 5 liter per minute by nasal cannula. Which finding concerns the nurse immediately? 1. Fine by basal or crackles. 2. Respiratory rate of 8 breaths per minute. 3. The patient sitting up and leaning over the nightstand. 4. A large barrel chest. Answer. Option 2 is correct. For patients with chronic emphysema, the stimulus to breathe is a low serum oxygen level, the normal stimulus is a high carbon dioxide level. This patient's oxygen flow is too high and is causing a high serum oxygen level, which results in a decreased respiratory rate. If the nurse does not intervene, the patient is at risk for respiratory arrest. Crackles, barrel chest, and assumption of a sitting position leaning over the nightstand are common in patients with chronic emphysema. Focus, prioritization, test-taking tip, immediate or priority concerns are issues that can threaten life or limb. In this case, the nurse should remember the normal drive to breathe and recognize that this patient's drive is different. With a respiratory rate so low, the patient is at risk for a respiratory arrest.